everybody. What's going on? This is Tony, and thank you for joining me on episode 22 of Tony Flying Solo. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a great episode because I have, once again, a very special guest, master of 80s, just 80s in general, and now 80s horror. Please welcome my buddy, Don Carrara. Happy National Shrimp Scampi Day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> is it really National Shrimp Scampi Day? It is. Along Why do with, I not know that? Well, you know now, along with National Zipper Day <laughs> and <laughs> what? National Day of Remembrance for all victims of chemical warfare. Oh, Jesus. That's like, who decided to put all these holidays on one day? That's like there's, not smart. There's also National <laughs> Hairball Awareness Day. So hey, I where's give, Red? Let's give it up for Red. My, <laughs> my, my, my cat Reddington, man. National <laughs> Hairball Day, buddy. You haven't had one today, so, you know. I'm sure he's going to jump up on the table and scare the shit out of me, as always. Oh, probably, dude. He's, he's a G, man. He's like a ninja. Yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, dude, I just want to thank you once again for joining me on, on another episode of Tony Flying Solo. We always have My a good pleasure. time. Um, so, dude, let's, let's talk about 80s horror. There's a lot of stuff that, that, that we always talk about 80s related, but horror is one of them that we have not touched upon yet. A plethora of films from the 80s, Anthony. Just a hodgepodge. <laughs> so, a hodgepodge. I like <laughs> so, so, uh, and I think the, I think the first one, we, we first, well, you know what, actually, let's take a step back. Let, let's, and I know that we got to mention this. I recently got married. On, uh, on April 16th, and it was a good time. You were there. You had a blast. Oh, it was and, awesome. Uh, it, was, it was nice to be, to be part of the, one of your groomsmen, and uh, I, I told you many times it was one of the best weddings I, had, I have ever been to. A lot of fun. Just uh, it went by really too fast. I wish we had a couple more hours. Oh, dude, it was so much fac- fun. At the, uh, the venue. Harbor Lights. Yes, oh, it was great. was great. And, and uh, it was funny because uh, last uh, two, about two, three weeks ago, I had my, uh, my cousin Dan on, who you met at the wedding, you met before he uh, we talked about aliens. So if you guys uh, have not heard that episode, we, you know, Dan and I really have a big interest in, in aliens and the UFO kind of phenomenon. So if you're into that, you might want to check out uh, our last Tony flying solo episode. Uh, it's a longer one. It's about an hour and 45 minutes, but there is a ton of stuff in there. I think you guys will enjoy, but uh, let's get into eighties, man. Let's do it. Um, first movie. I think we got to talk about is child's play. I mean, we have one. to do it because uh, I, I told you several weeks back, that I was in a conversation with Tom Holland, the director yeah. of Child's Play and Fright Night, when, the next one we're going to talk about, on Facebook. And I talked to him about the podcast. Uh, he seemed really cool um, and really receptive about listening to it. And for us talking about it, he told me that a lot of people still talk to him this day about those two movies and how they still really hold up in terms of the scare factor and the unique nature of what they did for the 80s so yeah let's 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 talk about child's play i love it it's 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 a such great a premise. great movie and and tom holland i mean he he's just a great director man he's, <clears throat> he's got so much stuff under his belt and uh he's just he's just amazing and uh i i can't say enough uh, enough good things about him um but i mean obviously being a director of of child's play which is one of the, the big standards of, of the 80s as far as horror goes that movie i think was one of those horror films that really kind of tapped into like the primal fear, like everybody has a stuffed animal when they're a kid. Everybody has a doll, right? That they that they carry around. But what if that doll actually started to talk, and then what if that that doll became violent? Yeah, you know. And it is it is a really scary concept. And for me, the first time I saw it, um, it didn't really scare me because I was old enough to understand. You know, at that point, you know that this was a movie and this was ridiculous. But it was still very frightening to me. Um, and I and I think. One of the problems for me watching Child's Play was that um, it it kind of brought in that that paranormal aspect, you know, where you have this mass murder serial killer actually like <laughs> inhabiting a doll and and causing it to kind of take on his his um you know I don't know his legacy, which is yeah. which is really crazy. Um, and and I think the other thing that I really want to mention too is it wasn't just. Chucky, the doll, being crazy, it was also the voice of Brad Dourif. I mean, he has got such a creepy voice, you know? And I had never seen the guy until later on, but, I mean, this that voice was really unique and scary. And he's a fantastic actor. I he mean, really he's is. done a lot within just the genre of horror. And I think that was one of the first things I had just heard his voice, and then you, you forget that 
he's playing Charles Lee Ray in the first five minutes of the movie. And what I like about that is you see him transferring what we believe is his soul to the doll. But the way Tom Holland directs the film is in the sense of making the audience believe that it could actually be Andy doing these things. Yeah. Even though we see something happen in the toy store, we don't necessarily know that the doll's alive. We speculate that it is, but they do really great ways of just seeing the legs run by. We never mm-hmm. see Chucky in full frame, I think, until it comes alive and until he comes alive in uh, Catherine Hicks's arms, the mother. Right. Um, which is a terrifying moment in in my opinion because the face changes and contorts and yeah. I'm like what a like a creepy design of a doll just in general yeah. so whoever came up with the, the, that uh, production design or or whomever did that you know really uh, hit the mark on that because it's it is really like a terrifying movie you brought it back to that 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 primal fear and preying on what we believe is something innocent to hold on to that is never going to turn around and. Um, just scare the living shit out of us mm-hmm. or, or come to life. Uh, it's really freaking creepy. And I think the other thing too, and this is something that I always kind of found interesting is I want to know whose, whose decision it was to make the doll have red hair <laughs> because I have red hair <laughs> and they always have that thing about like, oh, I'll beat you like a redheaded stepchild. <laughs> and it's like, fuck you. But like, you know, at the same time, like, you know, I'm like, why does he have to have red hair? Does that make him evil? And then you got like, you got problem child and he had red hair and he's like this terrorizing <laughs> child. Like what the hell man. But anyway, but uh, that doll, I mean, I, I always used to think back and be like, they, why would so many people want this thing? You know, and they get it from the peddler on the street. Because it wasn't, peddler. it wasn't really something that's like, Oh man, I have to have this because <laughs> even before Brad door put his soul into that, that thing was fucking scary looking. Who would want to wake up with that, like next to their bed or sitting? Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, you know, it, it, take a parallel to to now, man. I mean, what was it like two years ago? They had uh, that movie Annabelle, yeah. which was which was That's a horrible true. representation of what really happened. But I mean, that doll Annabelle, like that doll, looked like it had been like beat the shit out of, and then some. <laughs> they put it on a shelf. You know, like nobody would want to own that doll. No, um, but. You know, if you think about like the the My Buddy doll, that was the closest thing that looked like Chucky. You know, and um, and did My Buddy come out before the film, or did it come out after that? You know, or I honestly, same I honestly don't know, but it was very <laughs> close together where it was compared to Chucky. Yeah, I know that, and and I I don't know if I've ever told you the story before, but a buddy of mine actually had um you know the uh, he had the My Buddy doll, and mm-hmm. then he watched Child's Play. And then he got like totally freaked out by it. He's like, I got to fucking kill this doll. <laughs> like, you know, he was upset. And I was like, dude, it's not Chucky. Like, you need to relax. So uh, me and my buddy, um, you know, we, we went to school one day and he stayed home sick. And then we found out that when he came home, he had like <laughs> spent the entire day. Like he tied the doll to a tree and like beat the shit out of it with a baseball bat. He lit it on fire, did all this crazy stuff. He buried it in his backyard. So, um, you know, months later, you know, me and my friend, we actually, I think it was like a weekend, him and his mom went off somewhere and we actually went to the extent of digging up the doll and it was all like messed up. Like, <laughs> like the face had been burned. His like, yeah. eye was sliding down. It was all like filled with dirt. It was just gross. So we ended up, uh, that night <laughs> we put it in his room, but we, uh, we, we threw it in the closet cause we knew that he wouldn't like find it in the closet. He never went to his closet. So we buried it into some clothes. And then when he went to bed, uh, his brother used to sleep in the same room as him. So we took a chair and we set it up like at the foot of his bed. And then we took the doll out and sat it in the chair. (laughs) So he woke up in the middle of the night and like, well, well, actually he didn't wake up on his own. He like, he's a very rough sleeper. So me and my friend were like, you know, banging stuff. We were throwing stuff, trying to get him to wake up. And finally we like threw something at his bed where it was loud enough. And he woke up. And uh, he kind of like was like, oh, like, and then he saw the doll. And he was like, oh, oh, fuck. What the fuck is that? <laughs> and he's like God. losing his shit, dude. And then he like took it. He's like, he's like, we got to kill it. You got to help me. And he's like in the middle of the night. He's like, he throws it out the oh. window. Like we, we were laughing so hard. But and then he, we actually told him, you know, we dug it up. And he was like, he, we, I've never seen somebody have so much of a, a panic attack. Like he thought this doll was, but it, it really is a shout out to, to how big of an effect this movie had on him, you know, making him yeah. think that his doll was actually alive is trying to kill him, 
You Absolutely. Know? It's, I mean, it's and, a primal and, and fear. Let me ask, do you guys actually visit him in the mental institution now? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, believe it or not, he actually, uh, he joined the Marines and, uh, and, and he has since. He's fighting real life people now. <laughs> he, is, um, he had a successful career in the Marines for about eight years and now he's, he's got a job. So, yeah. but uh, okay, that's, that's great. He is not in a mental <laughs> institution. Made him, made him stronger. As long as that. none of the enemies are dressed with a hat and overalls. We're, we're yeah. in good shape. Because uh, my sister had cricket. Remember cricket? Oh my God, cricket! <laughs> but you're you're absolutely. Right. I mean, there's just something creepy about dolls in it general. Is, like, man. And you know me, like dolls. I, I have some issues with that. I have issues with mat people with the masks on. You, you do, know? but it's not. But it's it's the masks that like are clear. <laughs> yes, the clear mat. It just really well. I think any mask. It's honestly, like the mask from it. the Purge. I think. It, it, yeah. yeah. Um. But the. <laughs> This <laughs> I have an issue with the mask. <laughs> <laughs> a, a big <laughs> issue, by the way. Um, you get to know that about me. But this uh, this movie though, and this is it, coming back to just the '80s, and I know we'll move on to Fright Night very shortly. But this is why we're talking about this decade, and I, I know we've talked in the past. You look at '90s, you look at 2000, and you can't really say there's so many defining horror films. This one, Child's Play, will stand out. It's a movie I still really love. It's one that I kn- you know it's good when you keep watching it. And you just never get sick of the story. It's still suspenseful. It's awesome. Uh, the the deaths work. It's not too gory. It doesn't need a lot of the gore. It doesn't need a lot of the profanity. It just it's a really scary film. And I think that that to me is the definition of good horror. You don't need it to be hokey. And this is a premise that could have actually gone in a different way, but the way it it worked as a narrative. And I love the fact that it's told really from the perspective of the kid Mm -hmm. um, because these are usually adult stories. And it makes the audience question, yeah, is the kid crazy? Is is this all in his head? Um, Who knows? And and I think the thing about Child's Play that I think always bugged me in general was, okay, there's a doll. But if Mm. you're an adult living in that world, right? Yeah. Of of course, what's going to happen in the movie is scripted. But I think in a real life situation, if a doll came running at me with, with a knife, it just kicked the damn thing across the room, you know. And, and you know that's the one thing that always bothered me is that this doll was able to actually take down these like adult people. And it's like you know you're smarter than this thing. He's smaller. You just kick the freaking thing. But then you think, okay, because this soul of this serial killer is in this doll, is it somewhat stronger? Does it have the strength of the guy? And that's the and way those I are things that ne- at it. Th- yeah. Those are things that were never explained. And, and that's why know? it works. And that's why it, I know like the, the sequels are, are entertaining, but they become more of that humorous way. And Chucky yeah. has some great one-liners. And he's got a few in the original. And the bride of Chucky was just horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was so horrible. But the this one, I and, and I think it absolutely, I have to absolutely agree with what you said, that we're, we are dealing with a real person that's inside of there. And to the, the whole element of people trying to just rationalize what they're seeing. We've talked so much about that in our conversations. Uh, how's that drink? It's, it's good. It's good. No, 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 no. I'm the ice cubes clanging away. Yeah. Um, no, if anybody heard that, yeah, it's a drink. It's that's fine. fine. No big deal. No. Um, but yeah, and they, and they allude, they, they have the element of the, the mental illness and how are we trying to deal with mental illness? And they bring Andy to, you know, that, that doctor, they're going to try to, figure out what's going on with them in that point we know yeah, it's kind of like, like the exorcist the you know yeah. they're trying to make yeah. sure that she's something's not wrong with her and correct and, yeah. and that's why I, again that's another level to the film that adds to the horror suspense thriller aspect mm-hmm. doesn't need to be this this gore fest uh slasher fest and whatnot yeah um i mean i think another good one too uh you know just jump into fright night which you mentioned earlier yeah uh, another you know tom holland masterpiece that movie I think was probably one of my favorite out of all the 80s uh, just because it was really – it also was kind of that other primal fear. You know, It goes back to something I think – I think what really scares people is something that people can relate to. Yeah. And everybody has a neighbor. Mm-hmm. Everybody has this person they live next to that they don't necessarily know a lot about but you're friendly with. Sure. You know, so you see one side of the person, but what happens behind closed doors inside their house is secretive and they keep to themselves. So you wonder – you know, what kind of what's going on. And and I, and I think that's interesting that, you know, what if your next door neighbor was a vampire who would actually believe you? And I like the fact that it's an older version of Andy. 
it, with it, like it, not it, the it doll, is, but now is. we have the vampire right. aspect. And, and it kind of is almost like a very similar to a more uh, recent movie, which is Disturbia. Yeah. You know, his next door neighbor was a serial killer, but who would believe him? And, and a serial killer, I think nowadays is, is something people would be maybe more apt to accept because it's not, uh, un- unfortunately, it's not as uncommon as it, as it used to be. But um, I feel like with a vampire... People are going to be like, all right, well, what are you smoking, bud? Like, your, your, your next-door neighbor's a vampire. But, I mean, and that's one of the things that always bothered me it, it, with those type of movies. It, it interests me. It's like it's, it, you have these characters these, that you relate to that you can see yourself in their shoes. Mm-hmm. And then they try to explain the situation to their friends. Yeah. And their friends are like, no, man, you're out of your mind. And then, like, the character doesn't really necessarily take the next step. And I'm always like, if I was in those that character's shoes, I would say, no, wait, you don't understand, man. Like, I'm telling you this. Like, you know me. I'm not crazy. Like, this guy is a vampire. Like, look at these facts. Let me lay it out for you. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't true. And it's funny you because know? that's what it, Charlie Brewster, that character, he gets himself. He creates all of the problems for himself. He does. Because he has to be curious. He gets in his own way. He has to be nosy. And this is a guy who would only the uh, Jerry Dandridge, the vampire would yeah. only come out at night. So he probably most likely would have left Charlie alone. If, I mean, who knows? If he I didn't know. mess with them, but they, they made that, they blended some really cool humor with the Peter Vincent character in the mm-hmm. real, like legitimate scares of just, uh, I think Jerry, you hear the scream of the woman next door and then you see the mm-hmm. body bag. And then there's that, that scene in the alley later on with evil Ed and how he, ends up seducing Charlie's girlfriend in the club. Mm-hmm. And that was that was where Tom Holland was way ahead of everybody's time because they didn't they do that kind of stuff on True Blood. I don't know if you watched. Yeah, they, they did, yeah. They glamored people. And that, to me, like, they we know the vampires have all these powers, but they use that kind of sexuality aspect, too, to make this guy this unstoppable force because now he's he got Charlie's friend Ed. He has the girl. People don't believe him. He's really, and he has to get Peter Vincent, who's really this just puss bag who doesn't um, on TV. He's the vampire hunter, but in reality, he's just kind of this washed up guy who then has to work with Charlie. So a, a lot of complexities. It was made a couple years before Child's Play. Yeah, but one of the best vampire flicks I've ever seen. I don't think anything is really ever top like that. And the Lost well, Boys, are, Lost Boys, I was are gonna really. Say, I, was I, up I can't there, yeah. pick between. I think both are awesome. In my well, opinion, I think, nothing has ever topped well, that. Well, no, no, and I, those, I agree. Either about, of I, I think Roddy McDowell, I mean, he was probably my my favorite character, actually, because, yeah. you know, he was also, you know, the, the, the guy who actually backs this kid up. You know, so you kind of take a liking to him. You're like, all right, somebody who actually believes this kid isn't crazy yeah. and is ready to kind of, you know, take on this challenge with him. So you, you kind of naturally bond with him. But I, I, I agree. I mean, one of the best, you know, uh, vampire movies out there. And then as I got older, you know, believe it or not, my mother and my grandmother had seen The Lost Boys before I did and showed yep. it to me. And um, it, it was it's probably, I think, my my second favorite. And, and I think I think I might actually prefer the lost boys over fright night for like fright night has like a very like a strong place in my excuse me has a strong place in my heart but lost boys brings in that the gore that i don't think fright night necessarily had i I I feel like you know there's that one scene where they're at the um you know, all those people are listening to, what is it, like Aerosmith, like walk this way around the, the fire. On the beach, yeah. Yeah, right, and yeah. then, you know, they come out of the trees and it, it, you really see what the vampire's doing. It's disturbing. Yeah, I mean, that amped up more of the, the action. Whereas the action, like, facing, yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of threats next door. Yeah. But, um, and I like, I loved all the action. I love the Lost Boys. And I like the, the subdued nature to a fright. Even just the title, Fright Night, that's the title that's of the, great. Uh, um, Peter Vincent's show. And it really is. It's just like a night with this kid. It's set. And just this regular like neighborhood, area, yeah. yeah. And um, I was going somewhere with this, but I'll, I'm sure I'll get back to it. You're somewhere. talking about action and Lost Boys and um, stuff, and... It, but yeah, I mean it's it's one of those two that it it preys upon the fear. It's got the the teenage issues too, because you yeah. do see these kids, these all these three are kind of like outcasts in a sense. Mm-hmm. So it's great that they're at the forefront of this uh, as well. And it was one that I think we talked about a couple times too that they released on Blu-ray on that uh, website called Twilight Time, and I missed oh the first. God, yeah. I missed the first round of three thousand copies, and I said, I, "I'll tell oh you, my man. God damn it! I have to get the second one." And I ordered it immediately because they, I guess, they added 
a couple of extra new features to it. And I watched mm. the Blu-ray as soon as I got it. And I watched some of the, there was like a panel, I think at like comic con and some other documentaries. It was great because it's such a big part of my childhood. Well, see the Friday night, that's actually one. It's a, it's a, uh, a movie that I had on DVD at one point. Mm-hmm. I had it on VHS and then I never got the Blu-ray and that's something I'm still, I'm still actually hunting down is the Blu-ray. Um, I gotta get it. I mean, you got, you found that sale. I haven't found one as as with the with I mean, the same I, features that you had. I mean, they, I don't know. If, I'm assuming it probably sold out, and then people on eBay like sell them for ridiculous prices. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's like you know, which is I, awful. I, but yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to pay like a ton of money for it, but I would still like to have it. I mean, it's one of my favorite movies ever. Well, but. it's a film. Like they released John Carpenter's Christine through Twilight Time, and I never got it. And I I'm, I know a lot of people don't like Christine. I really love. It's a great Christine. movie. I and then they ended up releasing it blu-ray mainstream from some issues with twilight yeah. time so i got it and i'm hoping they'll do that with fright night because it should be released more to the masses because yeah, it's agree. such a big part of of 80s horror culture mm-hmm. and something that really defined and again tom holland and wes craven are your two oh my those God. two big guys yeah. i think from the 80s i can't really name Two other filmmakers that have like really solidified themselves in the '80s genre. I mean, when Wes Craven died, man. I mean, Carpenter, the ho- probably, excuse yeah, me, yeah, well, yeah. Sorry. I mean, I mean, they it took a the, the horror genre. I think in general took a huge hit. You know what I mean? Because it was just like I can't believe this guy's passed away. But you know, it, it really makes you look back at, at at the body of work that these people have done. And and Tom Holland, man, I'm he. You know, even though he's done some great movies, I, w- I want to see <laughs> I want to see like more stuff. You know, I mean, he does some stuff. Well, but... he did like the um, he did the the Langleyers. He did the adaptation of the Langleyers, which was um, Stephen King's uh, story. He did the adaptation of Thinner. Yeah. Oh, I was, gonna, I was just going to say Thinner. And, and I, I enjoyed love thinner. thinner. I love that oh, story. That was and, one of my favorite TV uh, movies. And I was so happy he actually adapted that um, because it's, I think it's one of King's more un, like underrated type stories. But mm-hmm. I think t- um, he did such a great job. With that, awesome and job. Intensified the the nature and the scariness of the fact of this guy who gets this gypsy curse, um, and then Tom Holland also turned up in one of that. It was one of the the Hatchet movies. As it was Hatchet act, Two. As an Hatchet actor, two. I loved yeah. it. He was great. It was um, awesome. So we have to just give you a shout out, Mr. Holland. Uh, and, oh, Mr. And, yeah, and, he's the man. And thank you for letting us talk about your films, and hopefully you you enjoy our. Our uh, nonsensical derailment sometimes going off task, but did you know? <laughs> did you know what I found out too? He's actually it's in pre production, but I found out that he's actually involved somewhat with a, a 2017 release of Jumanji. So oh, nice! I'd like to see what he does with that. Yeah, because be cool. Jumanji is, I think, with the Robin Williams version, it's very you know like happy, kind of has some dark sides to it. But mm. I'd like to see if he really puts a dark spin on like. You know the dark side of Jumanji. You know, like, you know where Robin Williams comes out and he talks about. He has that really cool monologue where he's yeah. like, he's like, you think you know what it's like. He's like, what about you know? He's like, well, you hear something scream. He's like, and then you hear them start to eat. You know, and, it, and it's like, and it could be you. And like, what if they they eat you alive? And it's yeah. just like, I really like to see like the dark side of Jumanji come out. You know, do you see what sure. like what is really scary about that yeah. aspect? So and I know that he could do it, um, and and I I am like beyond psyched to see where that goes, because uh, I think Gianji, excuse me, Jumanji could be done again and, and just be picked up a notch. Yeah. Um. So hey, that'd be that would be cool. Um. So yeah, definitely shout out to Tom Holland. Um. Jumping into an, another uh, '80s favorite of ours. Now, now this is something that we we talked about. Uh, we we've talked about in the past, but we never really got, delved too much into it, which is a film that you saw back in college. Called Into the Woods, and uh, I don't it, go into the woods. Well, ex- yeah, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to go into the woods. Rather, uh, don't. <laughs> let's not. Let's go there, don't yeah. watch this movie. No, um, yeah, it, don't it is. Watch the movie. Yeah, I mean, uh, don't go into the woods. Um, oh, is God. is definitely a horrible movie, and, and I had the um, pleasure. I guess I could use that word of watching this this misfortune, <laughs> and I'll never forget because you, you talked about it so much. You're like, you gotta see. Don't go into the woods, bro. Watch. Don't go into the woods. We got to you got to watch it. It's so bad. And so one night, like you, Jim and I get together and I found it on YouTube <laughs> and like I connected my, my Mac to your computer and we watched this piece of shit. And it is like, it is the worst horror movie I have ever seen. If you're looking for it's really bad, if yeah. you're looking for a horror movie with, with no, like with no, um, with, with no, <laughs> with no narrative that makes sense. No, nope. the, the, the plot does not uh, like line up at all. They're, the special effects are god awful. 
You it, would it, probably get more acting out of looking at a bowl of shit. Honestly. I'm telling you, man, the acting is <laughs> god awful. It's like they, it's like they, they knew they were going to go film this. I don't know, in like the no, woods you know of what Canada, like? and they just like on their way to Canada, they just like would see people on the side of the road, and they're like, hey, you know, you have the backpack. You're already. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like you, you know when you watch like, the movie. <laughs> you know when you watch like Jay Leno or Conan. Yeah. You know, and they they or uh, or Jimmy Kimmel where they go like like you know on some street and they interview all these people and they're just like dumb. It's like they took the worst of the worst of that and actually put them into this movie and said, "Hey, it doesn't matter if you can act or not." Just no, there was definitely no thing. audition process. No, whatsoever. it was just like, "Hey, you got you. You're a human. Do this." And <laughs> yeah. can, and can you speak? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. Can you wipe your own ass? Mm. Hmm. Um, and can you pay your way back home? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, you're going to be in. in this. <laughs> you're in, and we're you're not in. paying you. You're, no, yeah, and we don't know when all. this is coming out, and it's probably going to be awful. <laughs> but I, but there is actually a, uh, a, 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 I think there was a, well, I know, there was a very <laughs> horrible <laughs> prop department also, because they actually, there's this one scene, and it's, oh, <laughs> Jesus. This guy's getting stabbed with a machete, and as he's getting stabbed, you see the machete bend. Oh, it's like it's the oh, worst. it's like, it's like a horrible representation of a knife. Like you know, he's not getting hurt. But it makes sense. It's a we might as well just cap this movie off with what we saw already throughout, which just is just awfulness. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, but didn't they release a Blu-ray of this? Which I mean, sadly, I don't know how Blu-ray gets any better. Sadly, I, mean, yeah. I don't understand. There's some movies that out there that I'm like, how are these not on Blu-ray yet? But yet we put Don't Go Into the Woods out there because there's a big <laughs> the mass exodus of going to Amazon. I got to get this. Thank God I got Prime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what I think it is, man, is people are like, oh, my God, you've never seen Don't Go Into the Woods. It's so bad. We got to watch it. And then they search for it, and then people are like, wow, people really want to see this. Yeah. It's like, well, they do because they want to see how bad it is. You know? And, and I, you know when they made this in like the early 80s, they never would have thought in the, wor- in the world that this would ever make it to something called high def. They, nobody knew what high def was then. No. And I think the Max would just come out. High def? You mean like a viewfinder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a view. Yeah. <laughs> a view <Click>. map. <laughs> <laughs> and they never would have thought that you were going to hook your computer up to my television, your Mac. No, and no. And we would run it through something called YouTube. YouTube, what's that? No, That's on man. something called the internet. <laughs> 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 Com- computers? I heard computer. Nah, nah, nah. That, that computer they got now is as big as my truck. Are you telling me I can watch movies on that there screen? <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what that movie was meant to be seen on. A, a shitty, a like shitty the shitty screen. TV I had when I was younger, the first TV. Yeah. I had. This is what you watched Uncle in the Woods on when I actually had to get up out of my bed and hit the button to make the bar go across the screen <laughs> to land on the next channel because <laughs> oh there was no remote why would there be the, f- um, hey, I, the but the machete bent in that scene that's okay don't worry about it they gonna be able to see that on their screens just keep it in that's it wrap we'll wrap this scene god damn go home jonas seriously jonas <laughs> who's jonas i don't know he's the actor with the machete <laughs> i just pulled that out of my ass he was the actor special effects guy and editor <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Jonas. How many drinks you have when you did that edit? Oh. I don't know. Maybe about four or seven. <laughs> we'll come between four. We'll come between five and oh, oh six. My God. Six Jesus. and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. You know what would have, would have made that movie? <laughs> you know, I don't even know where that came from. You, know, <laughs> you, you went to like a different personality there for a second. <laughs> uh. You know who would have really upped the ante for that movie, though, if they got Val Kilmer? You know. Oh, Val Kilmer, we love Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer's the man, dude. Yeah. I mean, dude, it was early you know 80s. What? You know what? I'll tell you one movie that was not in the 80s, but it's worth mentioning. Is there was a movie that I watched with Val Kilmer and I and I was like, oh, this looks like a great movie. Yeah, and it was The Island of Doctor Moreau, Ugh. and I couldn't finish the movie because I was eating. This is weird. Okay, I'm weird, but like, I remember that night very vividly, and my mom was like, "You can watch The Island of Doctor Moreau. That's fine." And she ordered pizza, and so I'm eating pizza, but these people are like all deformed and like they're, yeah. they're doing these weird things, experiments, and, and like the pizza looked like the weird things and I was totally grossed out and I couldn't finish my dinner and ever since then I was like you know there's a movie I've never had the, the you know the the desire to see again um but you know it, it was a remake and I thought I'd check it out and it didn't do anything for me and then you know but Val Kilmer he went on to do a lot of other good things I mean let's just say that but 
He hasn't done anything recently that I really could say I'm psyched about. No, and it, not at all. And I really wish... Maybe that, like a Denny's commercial, but... <laughs> <laughs> dude, I mean, Val Kilmer gained a lot of weight. Yeah, he, he's pretty big. Oh, dude, he's wicked fat, bro. <laughs> hey, guys, if you have not seen The Island of Dr. Moreau, check it out. Give it another shot. I did not, but it might be worth Are it. Are you sure the people you were seeing there, like the deformed people, it wasn't really like you took a step back and you're like, wait a minute, these aren't really the deformed like creatures and animals of the island. It, it's actually Marlon Brando. Oh, God. <laughs> was he? Uh, he was. He was in that. Yeah, and that's right. he is. Is a big boy. He is. He is. He's really big. Well, you know, you yeah. know the movie, The Score? Yes. Uh, he's also in that. Like, yeah. At the end of the movie. And uh, he's like huge. He's sitting in like this dried out like like bathtub or something or some huge pool. Well, it might as well mirror basement. what's going on inside. Just a guy who's just all dried out. I mean, it was oh, just, God. I mean, he didn't last very long after that. He's a God great actor. Him. You know, he had his contender moments and then he just, you know, he, he got into food. <laughs> and it happens. But, uh, you know, so uh, but let's let's take a step back, though, seriously, because, um, you know, the Into the Woods definitely, uh, you know, or excuse me, don't go into the woods. Don't check it out. I don't know why I keep saying that into the woods. I think I'm just really obsessed with that show. I think you're I've really s- trying to, like, psych people up to go into those woods. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Into I, the woods. No, it's not the Johnny uh, Depp version. I don't know. I the- think I think you know what it is. It's that I, I, I saw that show recently and it's stuck in my head. Anyway, um, another movie, uh, one that you may have not heard of, uh, a movie called Scarecrows, which Ooh. you introduced me to, which was very, very interesting. You know, so I'm going to let you take that one. I, I, I'll start with, with my dad. I love him to death. And he, uh, he's, he's just big in horror. And, we would, and when I was younger, like my mother would work nights on some, you know, um, every other night or something. It was mm-hmm. a weird schedule. So he would introduce me to horror when he felt I could watch it. And he'd always have, you know, he'd always make me turn my head at certain parts. Right, right. So there's, it was like a weird um, censorship thing. But he knew I could handle it. And we, we rented that. I don't know. I might have been like 12. And that's a terrifying movie. It really is. Uh it's a low budget independent film, which some of those are the are the best types of horror movie. It out is there. late eighties, in nineteen eighty eight. Late eighties, about these uh, these group of uh, bank robbers. They're actually on a plane, just on a kind of prop plane. This guy's flying them in there. It's his daughter. They've taken them hostage, mm-hmm. and one of the guys jumps out with the money, and they they go down to get him. They land in the field, and there's a bunch of field of scarecrows who are actually like alive. They're yeah. like the people who used to live on the farm. And I won't go into like too much too much detail, but it's really scary. Like there's a lot of jumps in this. The scarecrows themselves look really cool. Yeah. Uh, again, um there was there were there was gore, but it wasn't in abundance. It was more based on scares. The the acting in terms of well, not decent, being man. any like big names was was were really good. You're like rooting for these bank robbers who actually are like not all bad people. And it just becomes this movie that it takes place all at night, so that's really scary. Directed and, by William Wesley, throwing yeah, him out there. I, I mean, it. I, I just one of those things, and it, it came out on Blu-ray, mm-hmm. um, and I think people have recognized the, the validity of it and the the contribution I think it made to '80s cinema. It wasn't ever in the movies, as far as I know, but uh, just one that I think built off of an original idea for the most part, mm-hmm. and used just legitimate scares. And that's all it needed. Uh, and, I mean, uh, yeah, it worked. It's this just, is a movie oh, that God. I would love to, to watch with Jim Kelly, and but we wouldn't. I, I would love to watch it with Jim. because it was so. Our friend Jim Kelly, he's yeah. he's a very dear friend of mine, best man in my wedding, best one of my favorite people in the world, and this kid means the world to me. But he has this thing where I don't know what it is. I think it was it comes down to you know like referencing his childhood where he was just like. <laughs> He was scared the shit out of by his mother when he was a kid. Like, his mother used to play these practical jokes, which is really, when you look at it, like, kind of fucked up. But, you know, she used to scare the shit out of him. And and he's just, like, so susceptible to being scared that we we have too much fun with him. And and, and he allows us to. You know, he has this rule. He's like, if you're ever going to scare me, just make sure you get it on tape. That's my only request. And I've done that. But, um, you know, if you... uh, I mean, the weirdest thing is that he, we, we 
you go to see movies, right? And they're, they're, they're movies that are going to be jump movies where you know there's going to be scares. And that's what you go to the movie for. He calls them hat movies, yeah. right? Where, you know, he wears a, a baseball cap so that when something scary is about to happen, he doesn't have to cover his face, which no, a normal person would probably just close their eyes. But he actually, <laughs> but, but he actually has to just, 99% of the 99% world. 99% of the yeah. people. He actually kind of tilts his hat forward so, like, the screen is out of view, right? But now he does this thing where he doesn't really wear hats anymore. And we went to go see Cloverfield Lane, Don, Jim, and I, and he did this really interesting thing where he knows that the scare is coming, and instead of, like, maybe just closing his eyes and waiting for that, like, moment, he actually, like, he has to look at the screen, but he, but he can only see a portion of it. So, like, he held up, like, his cell phone, like, widescreen way, <laughs> and he's, like, and he's, he's blocking half the screen, but he's kind of, like, looking underneath it. It was the weirdest thing. I was like, dude, why don't you just close your eyes? Like, if you're that freaked out by it. You know, it almost, he almost looks like that guy, if you guys have been to the movies, and they're, they're like, piracy is illegal. And then, you know, somebody holds up their phone. It's the dude with the hoodie, and he's, like, recording the screen. That's actually kind of what he looked like he was doing. Imagine somebody but came he in was just hiding behind. His phone. But he was just hiding <laughs> behind his phone to prevent seeing the scare. You know, but, I mean, n- the best guy in the world, but it's just, it cracks us up. I don't understand why. Scarecrows would definitely be Oh, a movie we got to like watch it with him just to see him jump. <laughs> he did get through The Conjuring here. I will say that. I he got him through, through that. <laughs> but he was like, dude, let me know when, this, when the jumps are going to happen. And I, I, he's like, don't fuck with me. Tell me when they're going to happen. And I told him and he was good, but it was just funny, you know. But if you guys have not checked out Scarecrows, uh, worth checking out. Just one of those B-horror movies that, you know, it's got like 5.6 stars, but it, it really is a phenomenal movie. It should have a lot more than that. It's I only, think, you know, it's, it's only an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's not that that's long. That's perfect length. It really is. a great is. movie. So I think one of the other movies we want to talk about is um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Classic. That is another classic movie. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of those movies where it really kind of goes back to what we've been talking about, which is that primal fear. You know, like everybody has to go to sleep. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody's got to do it. Everybody. Uh, and, and you can't fight it. And, and Even Val Kilmer. <laughs> Even Val Kilmer. <laughs> Val Kilmer sleeps. So it, it's, it sucks, though. You know, you, it, you, you see that movie and then you think if that was something that was real, how do I know that I'm dreaming or awake? And I, and I think that that's, that's the scary part, you know, is that what if somebody could actually get into your dreams and literally murder you while you were sleeping, which is kind of like your safe place, you know, it where, is. where your body is technically healing and, 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 all that stuff. and I think and as adults, you know, I mean, I can't speak on it for every adult, but myself, I, I mean, I don't think I've had a nightmare in, I, I can't even tell you how long mm. it's mostly like weird dreams. Sometimes really like, Oh, I don't really want to wake up from this. Cause this is like a really like happy, great moment. But you're right. It's your sanctuary. And I stayed awake all night, you know, and it's the worst thing in the world. And I know we have a friend who, who does it a lot. Mm. Um, I, I can't function. I, I'm not. I, the night I did this, I crashed like probably the next morning at like 10 o'clock. Yeah. But I had been up. I, I mean, I just stayed up all night. So I was easily up for 24 hours. And I, I was off. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. I made the drive to... Um, to, to, uh, to the college to Rick to bring my paper to the professor that's what I was working on yeah. and I drove back and I don't remember going it's in. so funny it that you so said that fucking weird. because I was doing an internship at a theater and um, I remember I, I did you know my whole thing my binder I put it together I was up you know I, I woke up that morning at, at 7 a.m. and then I was up all the next day until about 5 o'clock in the morning I think I, I tried to go to sleep couldn't and then I brought it to the to the theater at like 8 a.m. dropped it off was like here's my binder I have been up for 19 almost 24 hours you know in there and I started to get sick to my stomach yeah me too you know? I was like I was more in my head like, yeah, it was just like- I got home and literally I, my eyes were burning I literally passed out there, no one could have wakened me up yeah it, no matter it, what I was out and, and, and yeah if that was the, that's where Freddy Krueger would have definitely gotten me because yeah. I I passed out at like 8, 8 a.m. And I don't I, you know when the hell I woke up, but that's what those movies did a great job of. And like, you know, they did become silly after a while. Yeah, but enter, entertaining. I mean, the you know, original concept, the, 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 you know, the primary yeah. concept was terrifying. I mean, he he gets into a place that should be very guarded and mm. you, you're that's where you're most vulnerable. But that's where you should be your your safest and most, I think, in, in most pleasant state, because 
no one should bother you there. Right. And you're also, you know, you, these kids are taking Adderall to stay up, you know, because they're like, they don't want to fall asleep. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think that's the other, the other thing is it's, you know, you got this guy who not only is into, you know, is, is, um, you know, into your dreams, but he is, he's doing this to kind of get back at the parents who killed him because he technically was a child molester. Sure. You know, you know, he, they lit him on fire, which is why he's all deformed. You know, and it has all these burns all over him. But he, to get back at the parents, he goes after the kids, which are you know, the most important thing to them. Mm -hmm. So and, and, it, and it's, it's very disturbing, you know, because these kids necessarily haven't done anything wrong, but they get the worst, you know. And it's this guy with like these, this claw for a glove. It is so freaky. I know there are you know? all these elements to it. Like not even can he just like attack you while you're sleeping. He's got the, he doesn't even need the claw. No, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, he could do whatever the hell he wants to these people. And he does throughout mm. the series, as you see. And it's not necessarily so much of, like, I'm really scared, like I felt in Scarecrows, and I feel what Child's Play also does in Fright Night as well. It's more of there's some hokiness to it. There is There are, like, legitimate thrills of this, mm. of this movie. There are legitimate, like, horror elements. It's definitely the most serious one of the whole franchise. And the, I mean, the concept's great. Obviously, it spawned like nine. Oh, that's sequels. amazing! And and Robert Englund is phenomenal as Freddy, uh, and he'll always be solidified will, in that yeah. decade. I, mean, I can't and, see him as anything else. Um, you know, it's in, incredible. Like that decade pulled out an icon. What, what do we really have today? You know, it comes back to what I said earlier with the '90s and 2000s. We have more of like the Marvel that's going on, but horror is when we're seeing it today. It's it's more of like independent type films or very limited release that you'll catch when they come out mm -hmm. and it just stinks because it's it's such an excellent genre with so much potential yeah i mean and he did something in uh providence too it was kind of like a uh independent film west craven uh yeah it was with it was with west craven but robert england was part of it i oh, just robert don't england. remember okay i don't remember the uh the but it, it, it was west craven i just don't remember what the name of the movie was um, I'm looking kind of his, his IMDb right now, and I can't. You um, mean was Craven? Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus! I'm sorry, I just. Oh my God, <laughs> dude, that's so bad. Oh, anyway, well, let, let's move on. Uh, on that note, um, I think the next one we want to get into is um is The Shining. I mean, The Shining is is a mother of of horror movies, mm -hmm. uh, starring the ultra talented Jack Nicholson oh, yeah. uh, who also got to play uh, you know the Joker let's give it up there you know yeah, a really I mean, cool Joker but uh, but I mean in, in The Shining I mean he was just such a different character um, and it was one of those movies where um, you know you see him at the beginning as like this normal guy and then this place starts to kind of take hold of him and control him and it really shows it's kind of like it reminds me of like the Amityville Horror you know you mm -hmm. see the guy that oh, yeah. starts out but then the house starts to kind of control him uh, and make him do things he doesn't necessarily want to do. Yep. So a really interesting movie and really interesting character, you know, directed by Stanley Kubrick, who I got to be honest with you, Stanley Kubrick, man, he is a baller director, but also drove his actors insane. Um, he drove so many people insane. Well, Shelley yeah. Duvall. Shelley Duvall and Scatman Crothers, who played Dick uh, Halloran, mm -hmm. made him do like a ridiculous amount of takes when until he was like, how many more do you want from me? You know, yeah. and, uh, Nicholson would go home and like pass out on like fall right asleep on his bed because of the, the crazy ass work days. Well, Shelley Duvall, like he, he literally drove her to insanity for the amount of takes that he did because yeah. of there's that one scene where, you know, here's Johnny like that scene. She was literally losing her mind, which is why that scene is so awesome. Yeah. You know, and there's a video on YouTube. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, uh, you can literally YouTube it. I think it's like just look up Jack Nicholson, like shining pre scene. Um, there's actually, uh, a video of him actually getting like amped up. He's like jumping up and down in a room, yep. getting amped up before he breaks down the door. And they literally had to like rebuild that door every single time he broke it down. And it's you funny know? too, so because it's like 70 doors his, in his performance. I mean, this is what we associate with the shining of course, but Stephen King was not. He thought Jack Nicholson was a great actor, but he thought he was not right for the part because, but he didn't like the interpretation either. Yeah, he didn't like the screenplay, and he actually Stephen King actually wrote the screenplay, which Kubrick didn't even look at. He yeah. actually, he and I think this other woman decided to take the, a crack at it, and King ended up saying something about it's this is about like you know heaven and hell, and Kubrick's like I don't believe in hell, and so it was like just a, a weirdo. 
Um, but Nicholson was coming off of Cuckoo's Nest, I think, too. And yeah, and it's supposed to be the gradual descent into madness. And Stephen King thought, while Jack Nicholson's a great actor, people are going to see the crazy Randall P. McMurphy character, and they're not going to necessarily believe that this change is supposed to happen over a period of time. Yeah, but I mean. That's not what I see because I, I saw the movie before I read all this stuff. Me too. And I, I like what Jack Nicholson does with it. it. It's It goes up as one of Kubrick's best. Um, I mean, and, and you think it, there's not it's, – it's just not that. I mean, it does – it is paranormal-based, but I think there's images that really stick out to you are like, you know, the, the twin girls in the hotel. You know, oh, and, yeah. you know, and then you got that kid driving his tricycle or his, his which is bike. a great like tracking shot. All yeah, through the I mean, it really and... is. It's just, it's so freaky. And, you know, that's one of those things. It's like if you're ever in a hotel, and you see shit like that. You're like, what the fuck? Like, you'd lose it, you know, because of those images that are in, that are burned into your brain. They're really yeah. freaky. And um, and I think that uh, there's even a couple things like um, uh, I think it's 60 Seconds to Mars, which is Jared Leto's band. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a, one of his biggest singles that ever came out, and I honestly, because, it sounds weird that I'm saying it's his biggest single, and I don't remember the name of it. But uh, they actually play off actually The Shining, the video. Oh, really? There's, there's yeah, they, there's like you know the whole hotel thing with like the twins, and then these weird things in rooms and images, and it's really creepy. Um, you know, which is interesting because of the characters that Jared, Jared Leto has gone on to play. You see like how these images have instilled. You know these things in his mind. He's going on to actually play the Joker in Suicide Squad, which is coming out. So interesting. But um, you know, you also have a director, Stanley Kubrick, who you see The Shining, yeah, and then you see other movie he's done. You know, stuff like Eyes Wide Shut with Tom Cruise and and his you know uh, former ex wife Nicole Kidman. That was a strange ass movie, right? Yeah. I mean, all these weird imagery, and these people, and these weird masks, and these nudity, and all this stuff, and it's really like he kind of like broke records as far as when it was released because Tom Cruise and his wife were naked together. And then he does a movie like AI, yeah. which weird, you know, AI was actually supposed to be directed by Stanley Kubrick, but then Steven Spielberg did it because Stanley Kubrick passed away. You know, it was ridiculous until his eyes were officially wide shut. Right. Is that what you're trying Jesus to say? Christ. <laughs> Dude, you always t- find the uh, weirdest things to say, but the best things to say. You know, I feel like you're just intently listening to everything I, I say just to come up with a quip. It's brilliant. Oh, my well, God. You know, and we're going to have sound bites for this podcast. We always. Need, we need things for people to chew on until the next time I come on. You know what I mean? Just a little sampling until until DC comes back. Oh, definitely. DC. <laughs> so stupid. DC. Stupid. Oh, my God. A lot of people don't DC like. DC and VK. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what's VK? Val Kilmer, bro. Oh, oh Jesus. See, DC. Val Kilmer. A lot of people don't like DC, man, because it's not Marvel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. And if they seen the I just snorted. And if they see the uh newest Batman, they'll they'll see exactly why. Yeah. Um but Val Kilmer would actually <laughs> what? Val Kilmer. He already played Batman. You no, know, he would be I think he could play Jack Torrance. Uh, no fucking joke. I'm actually being really serious. I think this could be like a career resurrection. We could we you know cast it could be like a nicely made for TV movie, maybe like HBO or something like that, and you get Val Kilmer. Yeah. To play Jack Torrance. I'm not even joking. I actually think... I think he could do it. I think he could pull it off because you need to get somebody who doesn't necessarily evoke crazy. And Jack Nicholson has just that great smile. And mm. it's just... It's, it's him. He's awesome. Um, Here's Candy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Willow. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, I I will say this. Let, let's just admit it, man. We have a very we, we have a slight obsession with Val Kilmer. We do. And you want to know why? Love for him to be on, this I would podcast. love for him to be on this podcast. And and, I, and and you know we 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 bust his balls, but but also Val Kilmer. He's a great guy. He's a fantastic actor. You know, but it's just one of those things, you know, you, you look at you and we've said this before, you look at celebrities and you look at the high that they were on and then you kind of see what they've become. And he, he's taken some falls, but I, I, but he's also at a point in his, in his career where I, I'm, I, I, I'm starting to see more and more stuff with him. Um, it, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just looking at things that he's going on right now. Um, so I mean, Val Kilmer, he's got. Something coming out right now. Uh, it's in it's post production. It's already been filmed. It's called The Snowman. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm interested to see what what what's going on with that. Oh, it must be the sequel to Top Gun. That must be a son. No, that's actually Snowman called, Iceman. Actually, 
it has been announced that Top Gun 2 is actually taking place. Now, Val Kilmer originally said he was going to be in it, and we mentioned this in a, pre- in a previous podcast. He then has backed out changed? of it, but it is on his IMDb as being announced. So, okay. But there's been a lot of rumors that he's actually in it. Yeah. So I think that him backing out was actually another rumor that you know kind of spread like wildfire. But I, I don't see why he wouldn't be in it, why he wouldn't want to resurrect that character into some extent. Um, there's another movie announced. I don't know if it's actually legit or not, but it, you know it's uh, it's called Mark Twain and, and Mary Baker Eddy. Where oh, he's I, playing I, Mark I did, Twain. That's that is like a legit. I think it's like a, yeah. a TV type. I like, heard about it, but I didn't know if it was actually like. still happening. And then there's another uh, movie that was already done called Waitless. Uh, and that's actually a 2016 well, movie. That's clearly not about him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. That's fucked up. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. What? I, I, that was too what? easy. That was too easy. <laughs> I didn't expect it to go there. I would, but I would love to see him. Come, I would love to see him come back and do some great stuff, man. He's a severe. He's, he's, he's ultra talented. And um, and I think the movie for me that really blew me away was when uh, was when he did The Saint. Uh, the Saint is a great movie and he does a ton of accents. He's extremely believable in the, and he gets to play like five different characters. You know, and that's that's the that's a dream role for an actor. You know, you get to play five different characters in one movie and really get immersed in those in those characters. I thought he did a great job, and I really love that movie. Um, so, you know, I, I hope he comes back and does some great stuff. Um, yeah, he was a real genius in that movie. He was, man. Um, and he, speaking of, I um, totally missed what I did. No, I I, I saw what you, you did. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, he real genius. Shout out, it was a great movie. Uh, another one of my favorites. Um, so um, I think another movie that I just want to jump through as far as 80s go is, is going to be uh, Poltergeist. Um, Poltergeist, man. Paranormal. Got all over it. I mean. Well, especially, too, because like four of the actors in it are now ghosts. Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that they you have, are. They are. Yeah. You have Tangina. The, the, yeah. Tangina. The girl, unfortunately, died at a very the young other age. other sister in Poltergeist also was killed. You know, she was killed. Age. Yeah, like by her boyfriend, and like, oh, the, that's or, like nice. right after that movie came out, and then it was the uh, what's his name, the guy with the the white hair, the Amish, like hat. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Oh, yeah, he did die. Name's called. He's in, yeah, he's well, he's gone too. Th- those, I mean, that movie though is definitely. I think you know they did that remake recently, which was a piece of trash. I haven't even gone to, to see it. No, no um, desire. No, no desire. But I mean, one of the things about Poltergeist that already interests me is is the. <laughs> The intelligence of the parents, <laughs> you know, there's there's this one scene in Poltergeist that always like disturbs me is, you know, they, they have her in this on this like tile floor yeah. in the middle of the kitchen and the husband comes home and she's like, they're like, honey, watch this. It's really weird. <laughs> and they put her on the floor and she gets she's like slides across the whole floor and they think it's like a game and they're like, oh, it's. And I don't know that they think it's magnets like maybe. But for me, I'd be like, we're fucking moving. You know, like that. Fuck this, and they're like treating it like it's a game, and it's they have no idea that it's actually like some kind of poltergeist like in the entity. house that is trying to gain their trust and, and come into their. You know, see, my child would safety. love that going across the floor. She'd be like, again, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but I, but I mean, she, but but that's because you're there and you're laughing and accepting that it's a game and it's not something that's considered dangerous. Yeah, you know, and, and with something like that, I mean, that's scary shit. To, well, to me, it is. But again, they're trying to. They're they're trying to make reality of it because that's what that's what people oh, do find a situation. rational situation. That's you know, what people do in those situations as much as they want to find be- a real reason why this is happening. Well, as much as they want to believe in the afterlife and that type of shit and ghosts, whether they're benign or malevolent, there's always that realistic side of our brains that are trying to make sense of what we're seeing because even though we believe it, if we see it. We just said, well, it can't be that because it has to be something else because it's it, – or if we were thinking that if we were to see something, it would be much more apparent that it was a ghost. And that's why we, we turn that side of our brain off if it's something that – if it could be something else without a well, doubt. Well, there's also, you know, I mean, poltergeist is kind of like <clears> the extreme. I mean, it starts off kind of slow and the next thing yeah. you know, you know, they got some rope going through a portal. I mean, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, talk about portals. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, that that's insane. That that's ultimate like ghost paranormal shit. But I mean, to, to have somebody actually, you know, you're pulling people through a portal on with some rope, you know, that that's that's deep, you know, and that's scary. And the creature at the end, like the beast at the end. Yeah, that, it comes out. And oh, there, was an, there was an there was an original design for the beast that looks completely different. It was actually a design. You can find it online. 
it was actually more of like a human looking face. It looked like a little like Anthony Hopkins. And it was like, oh, I swear to God. And it came through the door. Like it came through the door. Oh, guess, no, I've seen. I guess Spielberg thought it might. It looked a little too. Um, I don't know if it was like cheesy or it looked too human like. Mm-hmm. So they decided to go with more of that. I think it's like that white. Freight, weird like, thing. The, yeah. the thing that looks like it's like like fringe type things coming yeah, off yeah, of it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those too. like not necessarily terrifying and going back to like child's play and, um, you know, Friday night and scarecrows and all that, but terrifying in the sense of we're dealing with ghosts and yeah, that's a, it's a questionable type of field. I think more people are into it now, but it's, it's a world we don't really know a lot about it. So that was, I think an important, uh, concept to do in that time. And Spielberg too, I, at just useless piece of trivia, was filming E.T. in the same neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. So people, a lot of people actually think he directed No, he was a producer on But it. a lot of people think he actually directed most of it. Yeah, he well. He just didn't give the credit. Didn't give the credit, To yeah. himself. Um, but you can look at elements of that and definitely see, like, how this well, is Spielberg's. Well, I mean, there, there's uh, Spielberg, uh, I believe, um, I think it was the, the, there's something about that scene in the mirror where isn't it like his hand? Or it's his hands that actually go on the face. Yeah, the Spielberg yeah, hands, you're right. Where he starts to rip apart the face. Yep. Um, you know, and I always thought that was really, like, disturbing, too. Um, I don't know. I mean, the whole paranormal thing has always had an interest w- with me. And I think it's because of movies like Poltergeist. And yep. because of, you know, seeing things like Child's Play and, you know, the soul going into the doll. And all these things are very, very scary. And... You and I, I think, uh, share an interest in that. You know, like we've gone ghost hunting and we've seen things um, or heard. Right, we haven't really seen things, but I think we've heard things that we can't explain. Um, one would be the Hornbine School incident. Yeah. And and I think just to briefly talk about that and sure. very quickly, um, we were there's a school where um, a lot of people, you know, it's a one room school where apparently they give tours of the one room. <laughs> and when you go in, uh, you can see this one room and, and see, you know, the, cl- the what the classroom used to be. And it was it started in the 1900s and it closed down in like the 1970s. But you can go and see a tour of it. And it's a historical location. But, um, you know, people have gone by and, and heard or seen a class in session, which if if I had seen that, I probably would have gone home and killed myself. And then there's a lot of, other, you know, they hear like they hear like a bell of the school ringing, which would make me want to kill myself, too. I mean, these things are just not normal, but they're walking by at night and it's oh, it's cool. It's a class in session at you know 11 o'clock at p.m. So um, interesting. But John and I went we used to go there all the time and, you know, peek in and they you'd see if there we could see a class in session. And yeah, we never did. Fo- we bring the, the camera and. Yeah, take, take pictures photos and, to see if anything would like orbs or yeah. something might appear on film. Which we always cool. used to hear this weird bird. It was like the same bird every time we went, <laughs> and then it was like some weird owl. But um, we also, uh, I always used to look in the room, and there was like this weird little clown that was on a desk, and I always freaked out. I thought the clown was going to turn its head and look at me, and then I'd go yeah. home and kill myself. And then there was a. Uh, you know, but it's like you, you want to, you know, test yourself and see if, you, if they're going to see anything and how do you react. And I don't know how I'd react. But, um, you know, there was one night where we drove down and we're driving down this long, dark road to get to the school. And for some reason, I just had this weird feeling. I was like, I really don't want to get out of the car tonight, man. Like, I'm just not feeling it. And as we drive past the school, him and I are sitting there. And as we drive past the school, um, the radio is on very low. But I hear this this noise, which sounded like it was coming from my back seat. And you can attest to this because I stopped talking and then I turned on the radio and you said, why did you stop talking? And then you were like, did you just hear that? And I said, <laughs> yes. And so we both heard it. Right. And it sounded like this. It sounded like somebody was in my back seat and it sounded like it. This is all it sounded like. It sounded like, huh. <laughs> that's what it sounded like. It sounded like a voice. Yep. That was the absolute truth like no doubt we we absolutely heard that yeah and like i literally like freaked the fuck out like to the point where like i was afraid to turn around because i thought i was going to see somebody in my back seat but there was no one there yeah i then turned my car around and i was like i'm not getting out of the car and we booked the fuck out of there and it was the sh- it was the craziest experience i've had but i we heard that noise together at the same time not something that one of us heard both of us heard so we can both verify that and it, and and I've, i i don't <clears throat> think i've gone back since 
You know, uh, it's, it's a very scary situation to think that there might be something that you can't explain going on. And Poltergeist was one of the first movies to kind of like show me that side of you, it's something that you can't explain. It just is. You know, and that's and the that, perfect way scary. of saying it. Like you can't, you won't explain it. It just is. And yeah. you have to deal with it. Just like our, our incident with the, in the back of the car. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things that. We're never going to know what it was where mm-hmm. I, I think we, it was something, mm-hmm. but just like the people in the movie, we, I think we tried to look for explanations. Could it have been this? Could it have been that? But I think again, as you said, we just stopped and looked at each other without saying anything. And there it was. <laughs> yeah. We were like, yeah, time to go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we, I think we, you know, we're, we're kind of running out of time here. We're coming up on an hour. So I just want to maybe talk about one more movie. So, I'm going to throw out a couple and then I think we're going to decide which one we want to talk about. So, you know, there was, there was troll. Yeah. Uh, there's another uh, movie called ghoulies, which, you know, was a big eighties hit. We didn't talk about um, Friday the 13th. Well, yeah. There's Friday the 13th. 13th there's yeah. also uh, Halloween, which, you know, a big Jamie Lee Curtis shout out. Um, and then there's also um, a movie that I am going to bring up at the end uh, okay. because it has to be mentioned. Uh, but I, I think one that we, that I think you and I had discussed that we wanted to talk about aside from Friday the 13th was house. Um, oh, that's yeah. a big '80s movie, man. Uh, I mean, I think House is worth talking about. No, let's talk about House. Yeah, I mean, what a great we movie! House instead of Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, yeah. everybody knows Friday. Everybody the knows Friday the Thirteenth, but I don't think a lot of people house. have seen House. No, no. Yeah, there was House and House Two. We need to watch that the next it's time we get such together. Such a good movie, dude. We need to do that. Yeah, because um, I haven't seen that in so long, and I'm I'm gonna get excited talking about it. So yeah, I really that. love that movie, man. It it was one of those. Um, one of those 80 movies that I, I saw kind of like, you know, on the cusp of was I old enough to watch it? Maybe not. Um, but but it's just a very, very interesting movie. Um, yeah. You know, one of those movies that I think um, also kind of, t- you know, tapped into kind of like the paranormal aspect, you know, like was the, and then it was also like that guy who was like the Vietnam, you know, uh, his, his friend that I think died in Vietnam that was coming back to like, you know, haunt him. It was the big enemy at the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It was such a good movie. The swordfish comes alive on the, on the, on the wall. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That was a great movie, man. Um, Uh, go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, it was just, uh, you know, was elements of it were, were comical, but I I don't know. I, I think it, it tried to be more like, like a black comedy. I think, or a horror comedy, yeah, play, yeah. I should say. But the fact is, you had this guy in there who's seeing all this shit, and you know he's probably you know who's gonna believe him. Mm-hmm. And he's this writer who's, I think, is trying to write the story about his experience in Vietnam and get away from the horror elements. But then he can't get away from the horror elements in this house. Right. So looking at it now as an adult, there's definitely a lot of metaphors that are happening there and definitely some um, deeper themes in the sense that, you know, he, he can't escape what he's known for so long. And could these things that happened to him in a way try to tell him something about who he is as an individual. But um, the ending when, when the guy comes back from Vietnam uh, was to me, one of the more scarier elements because you don't expect it in the makeup jobs and special effects were oh, right. were really cool i think it was the guy who directed friday the 13th too i'm not sure well the director of it was uh was steve minor steve minor was was great okay yeah i, yeah, like I don't think it's it, I, I don't think it's friday the 13th no, but Friday, maybe he well did, maybe he did a friday the 13th i thought it was the, the director of the first maybe it was the producer well then also uh george uh george went was in it too oh yeah you know, norm, norm from yeah, cheers you know and he was awesome it was awesome man he was great in that he was the neighbor wasn't he Mm. They had to do that thing in the closet. Yeah. Where there's like, all right, you're going to shoot this and whatever that something comes out of the closet. Um, wasn't but, he also in that weird? Um, wasn't he also in the masses of horror where it was like he, it was called the neighbor? Where or the yeah. family, the family. Yeah, that was good. That was a good one. I don't want to spoil masses that on here for people, but that oh. was a really good. And it, episode. The, the, I know it's, it's, it's like it's the thing about him, though, Matt, like, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you know, this guy from Cheers so when you that's see him it. in this, it was so different. And it was it such was a cool freaky twist. As shit. There was a cool twist. Yeah, like, I, don't yeah, want, yeah. Again, I don't want to spoil it for people on here, but they, they should see that. The Masters of Horror. That could be a podcast in and of itself is the Masters oh, of Horror. Oh, God. We should that. Do was that was such one. a short lived series that. It was great, though. Um, it, it, Udo Kier. Who was yeah. in it? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to have sex with me? Udo. 
<laughs> that stupid meme you sent me. Yeah, it was like, yeah. who wants to have sex with Kia? And it was like, oh, yeah. you do. Yeah, Kia. <laughs> Instead of, you do. Udo Kia. <laughs> um, he's going to come to Comic. Would you meet him if he came to Comic Con? Oh, totally, bro. Yeah. He's the man. He's like, hello, my name is Udo Kia. And I'd be like, yeah, I need you to sign this because he's like, do you, he's like, who wants me to sign this? I'd be like, I do. And he's like, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, Udo. Me? No, you. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, that's we should do that uh, definitely another time because uh, George went and he was great and in-house. But that's one I forget. And I know we've, we've talked about it a couple times. And well, I always forget that it, and then it like, exists. It's such a great movie. When, me. like, House 2, there was a weird, like, caterpillar dog thing that I remember. <laughs> you know? That's right. It's so strange, man. Like, they're just weird movies, but they st- but it was a great ease movie that stuck out in my head. That one um, had a creepy, creepy, like, character in it, too, that, like, killed the parents at the beginning of the... Yeah. He had, like, the, the, the cowboy hat on. Yeah. The big, that's like, right. That's they, right. They, they, the made, they made the big enemies, like, look. Pretty, pretty scary. Pretty scary. I, yeah. I think for well, those are things that that was when you like practical effects for like key. Oh yeah, you great, know? great makeup jobs, and um, you don't need any of the CGI bullshit. You just have. No, the they use a lot actor. of darkness and shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I think another one too. You know, uh, last one I could probably mention was is uh, I brought this up uh, a while back to you, and I and it, it comes in my mind every once in a while, which was a movie with Steve Gutenberg called High Spirits. <laughs> Uh, and that was like, and I know everybody laughs about it, but like high spirits, man. It, I don't it, remember much. It's one of those movies that sticks in my head, uh, just because it really was. I think the first movie where I, you know, there's a lot of movies that are, I consider my first like ghost movie, but mm-hmm. this was one of those movies that really like, you know, I remember bits and pieces of it. Then I watched the the thing in its entirety. But you know, they go to this hotel, and you know, there's all these different couples and stuff. And Steve Gutenberg's in it, and you would, and you would. It's really funny because there's one part where you know it, there's this huge uh, painting on the wall of like this, you know, this ship right yeah. in the ocean, and all of a sudden, like the painting comes alive, and the ocean floods into the main part of this castle that they're in, <laughs> which is like a hotel. And uh, this like squid comes out and grabs some of the people, and you know, it's it's really like freaky. And then there's also the um, there's a scene where. Steve Gutenberg every night in his room sees this reenactment of this like, you know, husband chasing after his wife and murdering her. And the person getting murdered is Daryl Hannah. Yeah. And the guy chasing her is Liam Neeson. It's like one of <laughs> Liam Neeson's first roles ever because the movie came out in, in uh, I think it was 1988. Yeah, 1988. High Spirits um, is it, it a PG-13 film. It was directed by Neil Jordan. A lot of great other people in it. Peter O'Toole was in it. You know, um, uh, Daryl Hannah, Steve Gutenberg, and then there's a couple other people. I think that, um, I think the um, so Daryl Hannah gets taken by Liam Neeson oh, every Jesus. single every oh. single night. Yeah, for, I guess if you want to go, to <laughs> you know who else was in it? <laughs> Jennifer Tilly was in it. Like it was one of her first roles too. Um, but I Peter O'Toole, Tool, I, Tool, I, I remember, remember her now. Hey, Jennifer Tilly also was this voice writing bride of Chucky. Oh, there you go, good call, yeah. buddy. But um, I will yeah, say, High this. Spirits. We should watch that. I haven't seen that in oh, years, such a, man. I, I f- completely forgot about that one. It's a great movie. It, yeah. But uh, you know, and it's it's interesting too because like you know, Steve Gutenberg like has sex with Daryl Hannah when she's like hot, and then all of a sudden like he wakes up the next morning, she's like old and crusty, and he's like, oh. <laughs> so, but, and it's just like she's like kiss me, and he's like, oh, I don't want to. Your breath smells. It's like really. It's really like awkward, but then like you know something happens and she comes young again and whatever because he saved her and it's you know happy ending and you get hot Daryl Hannah that not like you know <laughs> plastic surgery Daryl Hannah but anyway <laughs> um, you know hey it's it's definitely a great 1988 movie check it out uh, you probably will not regret it I think it's a great movie it, it's uh, what does it have on here for I want to see what it has for stars and, and then if High Spirits hey, is not at your local Amazon you could always order Don't Go in the Woods because I guarantee you there'll be a lot of copies of that actually I disagree you can watch now live if you have Amazon Video for two ninety nine <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> and uh, it has five. 5.7 out of 10 stars, but nice. whatever. Uh, only an hour and 39 minutes. That's a great thing about older movies, man. They get to the point. They you know, do. We don't need these two hour and a half movies, two, two hours no, and 45 minutes Batman versus Superman movies. We don't necessarily need a ton of uh, avant-garde type of filmmaking. And it's like, oh, let's see how I can uh, impress this people with a 15-minute shot of my penis. Yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm all set with that. You know, it's it's just, I agree with you. They're, they 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 got to the Drag point. Drag it out. They got yeah. to the point. They had interesting storylines. They had your great actors of the '80s, like your Steve Gutenbergs and Daryl Hannah. Awesome, and, um, 
Liam Neeson, who's also, you know, transcended that time into go, going into... Liam Neeson no guy. longer, like, you know, chasing after his wife and murdering people. He's actually murdering people <laughs> and, and taking in all these cool movies now. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, um, I will find you and I will kill you. Um, and, and, and then I'll did, throw you in the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Well, I will say this. You know, we, we've talked about a ton, uh, but, I, you know, Don and I have not seen this. It, it was either, you know, do this podcast tonight or go see the movie. But there's a movie out right now, which you guys should check out, called Green Room. Uh, and it's actually starring Patrick Stewart. Um, I don't really want to tell you anything about the movie. I want you guys to go look on YouTube. Go on IMDb, uh, wherever you can. Just look up Green Room. We have to uh, see that. And check out the trailer for this. It looks phenomenal. Uh, so so far, as it, according to IMDb, it's gotten 7.5 out of 10 stars, and it just opened tonight. Um, the other thing I do want to do is check it out on Flickster, too, uh, just to kind of see what Rotten Tomatoes is giving it. Uh, because Rotten Tomatoes has a, a pretty accurate um, you know, reading of, of what uh, movies are getting, and I'm interested to see if it's different. Um, okay. Wow. This has got a critic score of 88%, um, and a this, user the, score of 84%. The few things I read said it's a very, very well done yeah. thriller. It's got some, it's got some act, some, some, I mean, there's not a lot of actors that I think you would know. Um, mo- a lot of people are doing some independent stuff, but, uh, but Anton Yelkiv has been in a lot Anton of, Yelk, yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's, he's been good. in some stuff. You guys, you guys would know him if you saw him. Um, I'm trying to think of Star Trek. That he, he was, was in Star Trek. Thank you. He was in Star Trek Beyond. Um, he was also in um, Broken Horses. And then if we go back a little bit, there was uh, a movie called um, Burying the X, which uh, didn't do too well. But uh, if you guys have seen it, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, check out the green room. Um, you know, other than that, I-, I think we've covered enough for for this episode of Tony Flying Solo. I got to thank my uh, my partner in crime here for joining me again, Don Carrara. So so thanks a lot, man. Oh, no worries, buddy. This was awesome for yeah, jumping on. Looking forward to our next one, maybe Masters of Horror. Yeah, Masters you know, of Horror might actually maybe the be green a cool room one if we go see the green room. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll talk about the green room regardless because I know we're going to check that out. Yeah, we definitely will. So um, that about does it this episode for Tony Flying Solo, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Make sure you continue to check out Red Beard Podcast. Uh, you know, Cooley and I and Don are going to be checking out a lot of cons uh, coming up. We're going to be hitting up Boston Comic Con, New York Comic Con, Rhode Island Comic Con in November, and also in August, I believe, or it's July or August. Um, I'm going to look at the dates again, but uh, it's going to be Walker Stalker. Yeah. So uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, keep uh, keep checking us out on Twitter, and uh, we'll catch you guys later. Have Take- a nice Arbor Day, everybody. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Later.